Who was the prophet that we talked about last time? Thomas? Elijah. We talked about Elijah. Um, yeah, we talked about Elijah and what he did and, and what, uh, what he was all about. So, what is a prophet? Let's recap that first. Yeah, Carter. A messenger of God. A messenger of God. Very good. A prophet is a messenger of God. So, if a prophet is a messenger of God, what does a, what does a messenger of God do? Yeah. Tell people what's going to happen and it actually happens. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, uh, sometimes they tell people uh, what's going to happen, and uh, and we'll get to we'll get to that other part of it in a minute. Uh, but what else do they do? What else does a prophet do? They don't just they don't just tell things that are going to happen. They don't just say Katie's going to fall off a ladder or Joel's going to trip and fall in the mud. And, right? It's not. It's not that sort of thing. There's something more to it. Is it a pen okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Right. It, it's not something that's simply petty. What do they proclaim? What is it that they're talking about? When prophets are are talking, when they're telling the future, what are they talking about? 
who is giving them the words to say? Yeah, God. Ellie. God. Good, good. They're proclaiming and teaching God's word. They're proclaiming and teaching God's word. Who are some people in your life that preach and teach God's word? Yeah. You. Me? Okay. Joel? My dad. Your dad? <laughs> Good. Yeah, Alex? Our parents. Okay. Sometimes your parents? Good. Yeah. Yeah? Peter? Pastor Schultz. Pastor Schultz. Good. Yeah, your oh, pastors, God. right? They that. preach and they teach God's word authoritatively, right in front of the congregation. They speak with authority as they teach and preach God's word, much like the prophets did. Yeah, Cora. Okay, your teachers. Good. Yeah, another good example uh, of people who, who preach and teach God's word. Good. So now, kind of going back to prophets, how do we know that a prophet is not fake? How do we know that they're that they're the real deal? Yeah, Evan. Good, yeah, yeah. What they teach, what they say, their words come true, right? They come true. It's not just that they say Katie is going to fall off a ladder and then it never happens. It's not to say that Joel's going to trip and fall in the mud and then it never happens, right? Or, or you know, Peter or whoever, just you know, throwing out examples. Um, Right? The, their words come to true. They actually happen. Yep. So as we talked about Elijah, what was our big takeaway? What was the, the main point of our discussion? Yeah, Cora. Um, it was about the, um, the prophets and the group. Okay, we had the story about the altar, right? Yeah, and what what happened with the altar? What was that whole story about? Thomas? Um, the Elijah saying that um, the dual altar whoever God sent down fire from the sky without reminding it um, would be real. So. Right, right. They set up two altars, one to Baal and one to Yahweh, and they said Who, whichever God actually accomplishes lighting the fire, uh, that is the one true God. But what did Elijah do to, do to his altar that made it seem like it could never be lit? Peter? He put, well, he made it like a, almost like a moat. He put like bricks around it and then he put water in it. Yeah, he basically drowned his altar. He poured so much water over the top of it that it could not be lit by regular fire. But yet, what does God do? What did God do? Yeah, Cooper? Did he make the fire? Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. He brought, he brought down lightning from heaven, lit the fire, and what happened to the altar? Peter? Well, I was going to say, the funny part about it was, Baal is the god of lightning and fire. Right. Yeah, God, uh, Baal is supposed to be the god of lightning and fire, and yet that's how Yahweh lights the altar, right? God shows his dominance. Yeah, Carter. He made the altar vanish. Right. It's not just that he lights the fire, but that he burns away all the rocks, all the water, the sacrifice, everything, it's all gone. That's how God, how strong God is. Right? Man. And what was the whole point of all this? What is it demonstrating? Alex? No? Cora? To show that God is real. To show that Yahweh is the one true God. Yeah, Peter, did you have a question? Now, I was just going to say, also, didn't he uh, say, Elijah say, like, is he, is he, like, sleeping or, like, on the toilet? Yeah, Yahweh, or Elijah taunted uh, the Baal followers, saying, well, maybe maybe Baal's on a trip or he's on the toilet or maybe he's asleep or oh, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Alex. It's, it's hotter than the sun surface. Mm-hmm. 
And yet God and God demonstrated that he has power over the lightning. Right? He has power over lightning and fire. Yeah. Pretty cool. Awesome, dude. Yeah, pretty awesome. All right, so last week there were a couple things that we were a bit foggy on that I wanted to come back to and just bring to light. Uh, we had talked about how after Solomon, the kingdom gets divided, right? It gets divided under two, two kings. So we have Rehoboam and Jeroboam, okay? Uh, Rehoboam was the son of Solomon, okay? He was the rightful heir to the throne. But does anybody remember what the problem with Rehoboam was? You know, Cora? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so Rehoboam, he didn't want to be a king like Solomon. He said that he was going to work the people harder than Solomon ever had. He was going to be cruel and ruthless. And so the people rebelled, and they had Jeroboam rise up and rebel against Rehoboam. And so they had this split. But Rehoboam was the son of Solomon, and Jeroboam was the one who rebelled. Okay, and then we have this, this split. Israel divides, okay? And Judah is where Rehoboam, Solomon's son, continues living as king and reigning as king. And Israel is, is the part that's split off uh, under Jeroboam's reign. Okay? A lot of big names and, and, and information, uh, but I just wanted to clarify. Uh, so that's what happens. There's a split, and, uh, and it, it makes a big impact on the future of Israel. Yeah, Ellie? Did they decide to split it like the two kings? Like, did they decide to split it or something? Like, did they decide like you can't trust over like there? It, it was kind of the people. It was kind of the people. Um, the people who followed Jeroboam went to the northern side and said, "This is our land now. You leave us alone, or we'll fight you." Okay. And it was the same thing with the south. Mm -hmm. And so it was just the conflict that divided the nation. Okay. All right, so uh, we talked about the southern nation and how the southern nation was the only nation to have a queen. And you guys asked, uh, which one is the queen? A fair question. And I didn't have that answer for you, but uh, her name was Ahaziah. Was her name? Ahaziah. Ahaziah. Okay. Yeah, that's why I couldn't pick it out of the list. Because if I had to guess, I, I would have said that it was Azariah. Yeah. Um, that just seems like a much more female name. But it was Ahaziah. Did you like switch it up this time? No. What's that? Did you like switch it up on the slides? Did you just guess? No, I, I found it in scripture. Yeah. I found her reference in scripture. Okay, so with that, are there any other questions from last week? We covered a lot of historical information and background. Yeah, Peter. That says 19 kings, and then it says 8 kings, 8 good kings, and 12 bad kings, and that's 20. Yeah, so, so the 8 good kings and the 12 bad kings, that's just talking about the, t the 20 kings. Or the... I, the Eight good kings. Sorry. So there were twenty people, twenty royalties. Okay. There were twenty royalties. Eight were bad, or eight were good, twelve were bad. But the eight good were all kings. I believe so. Yeah. All right. And then, and then is. Israel had how many kings? Does anybody remember? Korah? They did not have 10. They had twice that. Well, they had 20. Good. They had 20 kings. And how many of them were good? Anybody remember? Yeah, Thomas? They were all bad. 
good. They're all bad. All right, so what happens after, after our talk last week? We kind of shared a few of the stories of Elijah and some of his escapades. But after, after those things happen, Elijah is taken up into heaven. He's taken up into heaven on a flaming chariot. He, it, it's actually really interesting because Elijah is one of two people who do not die in the Bible. They're taken up to heaven as they are alive. Does anybody know the other one? Oh, wait. I guess it's up there. It's Enoch, right? Enoch is taken up to heaven as well. Um, yeah. So those are the only two people in Scripture other than who? Good, Joel. Jesus. Jesus is the third. He's the final one who goes to heaven without dying. Ellie. They were both really good times, weren't they? Who? Uh, Enoch and Elijah? Uh, Enoch and Elijah weren't kings. Enoch was just a faithful yeah. follower. Mm -hmm. um, he was from like the time of Adam and Eve, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. So, yeah. Adam and Eve, that's a little All right, so then who follows Elijah? Does anybody know? Say it out loud, Carter. Did I say it right? Elisha. Elisha? It's Elisha. It's Elisha. Is that a boy or a girl? But you're right. It's Elisha. Elisha is a boy. That sounds like a girl name. It does kind of sound like a girl name, but who can tell when they're like this? Okay, so there's a, a we don't have a whole lot of time to talk about Elisha. Um, but just to kind of give us some interesting information. Elisha does some really cool things as a prophet. Uh, so Elisha actually tutors under Elijah. So as Elijah is doing his ministry, Elisha learns from Elijah. He learns uh, what it means to be a prophet and, and he grows a bit. And so when Elijah goes up into heaven, Elisha is there. Okay? Peter? Is that why they like almost have the same name? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no that's just here. coincidence. <laughs> so, um, so Elisha takes up Elijah's mantle. Elijah passes on his his garment, uh, and Elisha takes it up as the prophet who would follow Elijah. Okay, he follows after him, and then. Um, and so Elisha has some really cool events. So right after he, he becomes the prophet, the prophet who would follow Elijah, he's walking down the road when a bunch of kids come out and start making fun of him wow. because he's bald. Wait. <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting story. So they're making fun of him because he's bald. He's walking down the road, and so you know what he does? He kills them. Oh my gosh. Kind of. Whoa. <laughs> They're kids. He calls down bears from the mountains, and the bears kill 43 of the kids. Dang. How, how, how many kids were there? Kids were there? I don't know. There must have been a lot. Search that up for us, Victor. No, it's not in the Bible. Ha ha. Why we have that's why we have it. That's why we have it. Wait, not Where is that? It's not in the That's in 2 Kings chapter 2. Okay. All right. I'm looking for that one. All right, so then in 2 Kings chapter 4, we have the story of Elijah and a widow. Uh, so remember, Elijah kind of had a story with a widow. What was Elijah's story with the widow? Anybody remember? Uh, two, uh, two, uh, the son died and... What did he do? He made him come back to life. Right, yeah, good. Uh, Elijah was, was with this widow. The widow took care of him and cared for his needs, and then her son died. And so Elijah um, prayed to God, and, and God brought the son back, back to, life. to life. Brought him back to life. Yeah. And so the story with Elisha and the widow 
the widow comes to him and says, I don't have enough money to take care of you. I don't have enough money um, to take care of my children. And Elisha gives this widow an unbelievable supply of oil that she sells to, to take care of her. Oh, her, I remember uh, the story. To take care of her family forever. Okay? She, she just takes a pitcher and, and begins to pour it out into these larger jars. And they run out of larger jars before the pitcher runs out of oil. Wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah, Corey, did you find something? 42 of the youth. <coughs> 42 of the youth were killed. Wait, where is this at? So, that's, that's in 2 it Kings chapter 3. Elijah, it's chapter 3. Okay. Wait, chapter 3? Oh, uh, it's okay, we're not going to go back. Let's, uh, let's go forward. So, uh, Elijah also has a, a miracle where he raises a, um, a child back to, to life from the dead. Um, it, it's the Shunammite's uh, woman is, is how it's described. Um, it's a woman who has a very old husband and, and only one son. And the son dies and he raises the son back to life. But it's another cool story. We don't see many stories in the Old Testament or even in Scripture at all where people are raised back from the dead. <clears throat> Yet this is another example of that. All right. Um, and uh, I mean, if you want to learn more about Elijah and what he did, there's some there's some really cool stuff there in Second Kings. Uh, but let's keep going. What about the accident? The axe head? Uh, the axe head was kind of a cool one. There, um, Elisha is walking through the woods and some workers are working on trees and an axe head flies off the handle and goes into the river. And so Elisha takes a stick and throws it into the river and the axe head floats to the top of the water. And they're able to grab the axe head. <coughs> It's kind of cool. Just, like, There's lots of cool stuff. There? Yeah, he threw a stick in there, and then the axe head rises to the surface. And if oh, this kid, like, two kids. No, he was like this. Yeah. All right, well, let's move on to our, our main conversation for today. We're going to be talking about Jonah. We're going to be talking about Jonah. So I want everybody to open to Jonah chapter 1. I'm on that. Wow. Oh, All right, so there's something really cool about what we're going to do today. We're going to read through the entire book of Jonah. Oh no. It's going to be cool. Why is every time I'm going to read through the whole chapter? It's only, it, it's only like four pages. Okay, good. Okay? Uh, but it's still really cool. We get to read. But it's still really cool. We get to read a whole book of the Bible as we gather together. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to talk about the story of Jonah. Uh, let's go ahead and start reading. We're going to read verses 1 to 6. And we'll do what, what we did last time we met. We're just going to start with Evan. And Evan's going to read verse 1. And then Thomas is going to read verse 2. Alex is going to read verse 3. And we'll just keep going around the room until uh, until we finish our each reading. Okay? I promise everybody will get two or three chances to read. All right. Does somebody have a page number for Evan? I got Okay, awesome. Can you read verse 1 for us, Evan? Thomas? Arise, go to Nebuchadnezzar, that great city. And call out against it for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to trench from the pierce of the floor. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. 
But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest before it, and a mighty tempest of the sea, that the ship struck in the great God. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God, and they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea, flying it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship, and had lain down, and was fast asleep. So the captain oh. came and said to him, what do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call up to your God, for us the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. For they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. All right. Uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Sorry, I'm trying to find us a good map so I can show you where some of these Dude, places are. Dude, look at are. the jaw screen. Donut. Oh, it's the jaw Donut. screen. Donut. 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 You're going to see the shark, like, uh, if it was, oh, if it was no, animated, the shark would come up and, like, Donut. I know what you mean, Peter. You're in the view of the shark. Peter, uh, the shark. Uh, the shark. Uh, Wait, uh, the shark. Uh, Wait, uh, the shark. Uh, Wait, the uh, no, it's a whale. It's a whale. It's a whale. It's a whale shark. It's a great white shark. I just changed it. It's a whale shark. No, it's a car. It's a car. Look at this. Oh, it's a car. Look at this. 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 Look in that passage, we have we have Jonah's call. Um, Jonah is is called by God to to step up and and um, and be his prophet. So we have uh, now a minor prophet, one of one of the prophets who who had ministry for just a small period of time for a specific place. Um, what was his calling? Yeah, to go to Nineveh. Um, and what was he supposed to do there? What was he supposed to do in Nineveh? Yeah, Thomas. To stop them from being evil. Okay, to, to stop them from being evil, how? How was he going to stop them from being evil? Yeah. He was going to, like, preach God's word. Good. Yeah, he, he's to go to Nineveh and tell them God's commands. You're going to go to Nineveh and tell them God's words, God's commands. Oh, gotcha. I'm looking for that, but there's, there's one right here. Yes, can you? We can move this table around as we need to. All right, so uh, just to kind of get an idea of... Um, is there a map on our book? Is there? Yeah. 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 Really? yeah. Okay, so I guess that's kind of blurry, isn't it? Okay, well, over here is Israel. Okay? So over here is Israel. Jonah is... Uh, a prophet in Israel, in that northern kingdom. We're in the time before uh, the, the northern kingdom falls to Babylon. So we'll talk about that later. You don't need to worry about that. Um, but Jonah is a prophet in Israel, in that northern kingdom. I'll let you After guys time, can you go back to no. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, no. So it's over so here true. is Israel, okay? And, and Israel is here on the Mediterranean Sea. So we have Israel, then we have Africa here. All of Africa here. And up here we have, we have part of Europe. Okay. Um, Tarshish. Okay, yeah, that's a good map. So Tarshish would be at Spain. So you guys know where Spain is? Yeah. Yeah. Tarshish would be where Spain is. I think that, uh, that'll work fine. Okay, Tarshish is at Spain. So over here is Israel. Tarshish is all the way over here. Okay? Everybody up? Eyes up here. Okay? Tarshish is way, way over here. Okay? Now, Nineveh is up here. So where is, where is uh, 
Where's Jonah going? He's going way in the wrong direction, right? He's going in the opposite direction of where God wants him to go. Right? Yeah, he's, he's escaping, right? So Nineveh was the capital of a place called Assyria. Okay? And Assyria was a really, really scary country. They were very powerful. Um, they would eventually be the ones to destroy Israel. Yeah. They would be the ones to destroy Israel. Uh, the northern kingdom. Not the whole kingdom. The northern kingdom. Okay? So they would be the ones to destroy that northern kingdom. So Assyria was a scary place. And these people were very sinful. They had their own gods. They had many gods. And they did not care much about Yahweh. Okay? Assyria. Assyria. Yeah, Korah. They were not Greeks. The Greeks would not come for quite some time. They were not Romans. Alright, All right, so then going back to our conversation, we see we see Jonah's call, right? Jonah is called to go and preach to Nineveh, to the capital of Assyria, a city of about 120,000 people. A lot of people. Okay? <coughs> but what does Jonah do? What is his response? Carter? He goes the opposite way. Yeah, he runs away. He doesn't want to go in. Why? Why doesn't he want to go? Yeah, Carter? He's scared. He's scared. He's afraid. He knows what these people are, are about. He knows what they can do. He knows that their armies are big. And how do they feel about God? Yeah, they don't like him. They don't care. They don't care about the one true God. They have their own gods. So then, uh, just taking a look at it, how do you think that they would receive Jonah and his message? Carter? They, would, they might have killed him. Yeah, they might have killed him, right? They might have killed him. He has every right to be afraid. But why shouldn't he be afraid? Thomas? Because God would be with him. God would be with him, and he would protect him. All right, so then in the final verses there, the captain says something to, to Jonah. He says, what do you mean, you sleeper? What, what on earth does that mean? What does that mean? Cora? It might mean, like, what are you doing? Okay, but the but they know that he's there. He paid the fare. He paid them, so it's not like he's a stowaway. So what what else do you think that what might mean? What do you mean, you sleeper? It doesn't sound right, does it? Yeah, Corey, can we give another shot at it? Okay, what are you trying to do to us? You're getting closer. Ellie? Like, kind of like a guy that is like, kind of like, Okay. Um, so what's going on? What's going on right now on the, on the ship? Jonah's clearly in the bottom of the ship, and he's like, sleeping. But what's going on on the surface, Thomas? There's a giant storm. Okay, there's a huge storm. There's a huge storm. So then, listen, listen to what the listen to what the captain says. What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. Ellie. Bottom of the boat. Okay. So when he was supposed to be doing a task, okay. And he was at the bottom of the boat. So. What are you so doing sleeping sleep. at a time like this? Boy. You're gonna sink. Boy. Yeah. How can you sleep at a time like this? Boy. 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 How can you sleep at a time like this? We're gonna die. We're 
Oh, we're gonna die. Oh. Wake yes. up. He's Pray. probably like, no, he, Jonah knows that God will take care of him. How can you sleep at a time like this? All right, so then let's, let's go back to the Jonah passage. And let's read the next section. So we'll read uh, 7 verses, uh, verses 7 through 16. We are you Okay, well then we'll, well let, let's read 7 and 8 again. Alright, uh, so then where are we? I'll read 7. Well, I just okay. read last, but like... Go ahead, Peter, you start us off. Verse 7, let's go. And said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on his account to see what has come upon us. So they cast lots and a lot fell on each other. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation and where do you come from? What is your country and what people are you? Well, hold up. Let's take a second. What is? What are lots? Really? Fishing. Fishing? No, not quite. Ellie? No? Anybody know what lots are? Cora does. Cora? Um, it, I think it's sort of... Net. No, no, not quite. Joel, like you know? Dice? Yes, good. Good. They were kind of like dice. So you would write people's name down on a tile and then you would throw the tiles and how the tiles landed based your decision. So it's like they're gambling. Okay. And yet, and yet despite this, the lot falls on Jonah, right? Right? The, the lot falls on Jonah. So despite the fact that they're just throwing dice, the lot falls on Jonah. <coughs> All right, so let's keep reading. Verse 9. He said to them, I am a Hebrew, I fear Jonah, the Then the men, men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. All right, so what happens because of Jonah's disobedience? Yeah, Carter. A huge storm. Okay, a huge storm comes along. A huge storm comes along, and eventually what? Ellie? It stops. Okay, it stops, but why does it stop, Alex? Because they throw him overboard. Because they throw him in. They throw him in. Good. So God raises a storm, and because of everything that's going on, Jonah is thrown into the sea. Whose idea was that? The dice. It was Jonah's idea. 
It was Jonah's idea. So if you're going to get thrown into the water with it storming out, what, what do you think the likelihood is that he survives? Zero. Zero. It's not very likely, right? It's not very likely. All right, so, uh, but what do the men try to do? What do the men try to do? Cora? Um, row back to land, but it doesn't work because Jonah Good, yeah, they try to make it back to land so that they don't have to throw Jonah overboard. They try to make it to dry land and try to outrun the storm, but you can't outrun God. So they fail. They fail to outrun the storm. And in the end, they have to throw Jonah overboard. Yeah, Peter. Why does it say they pray to their gods, Mark? Do they have... They would have had their own gods. They would have had their own gods. He said that in the beginning. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, these people no, would have didn't. had their own gods. And, and you can tell because because it, they use a little g that they, they don't believe in the one true God. Yeah. Cora? Um, um, how were the fake gods started? Did someone just like make it up and then people caught on to it? Or yeah. Did they choose? That's about right. And it's funny because a, a lot of the fake gods are very similar to the real God. So you can tell that they, they are just taking thoughts about the real God and applying them to something fake. So, yeah, Alex. So technically when the storm caught up to them, were, were they tipped to sea or what? Well, they were already on the sea. They were going to Tarshish. No, I'm saying, saying was the ship turned to sea, like turned over? Oh, it, was it flipped over? Um... No, I mean, it sounds like the, the people on the boat survived. It sounded like they were fine. Um, because they followed Jonah's directions. Uh, yeah, Joel? Wait, so, they feel like, so they said they were the false gods, so like they would take stuff and like worship a cup, maybe? Perhaps. Wow. Usually it was more like a bowl or a crane or some kind of animal rather than a cup. <laughs> Is it? Cora? So when the captain and the people were like talking about what might have caused it, they thought it was like one of the causes of like these bombs in the sea or something? Yeah, it, it, uh, their immediate thought is that somebody has angered the gods. Somebody has angered like Zeus or Poseidon, you know, that sort of thing. Not that those gods were around at this time. But that uh, their gods, oh. right? Their god of the sea. Oh, well, somebody must have made that one really angry for whatever reason, whatever they did. That's the way that their immediate thought goes. And in this case, it turns out to be right. Jonah had angered the one true god because he had been disobedient. Yeah, Alex. They angered Poseidon. Poseidon is the god of the sea. Right, but he's not around yet. Greek culture is not around yet, and Poseidon is a Greek yeah. god, and that's not going to come right. until it's after the Babylonian Empire falls. Then it could be Neptune. The Romans come it's after them. Neptune. Romans come after the Greeks, and Neptune is the Roman god for Poseidon. Poseidon, his son, is Percy Jackson. What? That's where I get it from. All right, so let's get back on deck. If we're going to get to our activity, we got to keep going. All right, so why is this part of Jonah's story so important? Why why does this matter, Cora? It um, shows that Jonah did a wrong thing. Okay, Jonah does a wrong thing. Yeah, what does this tell us about God? Why is What does this uh, show us about God? Joel? Uh, we need to obey him. Okay, we need to obey him, but why? Cora? Um, I was going to say why. Okay. Um, before, the question before. Never mind. Oh, okay. Ellie? Um, you should obey him because, um, uh, oh, because, um, he'll forgive you, but, um, uh, you try your hardest 
not to sin, but you always feel out. Okay, yeah, we obey him, why? Why do we obey God? Because he... He sent Jesus to die on the cross. Okay, and why did he send Jesus, Cora? To save us, so the least we can do is at least praise him. Okay, but why us? Why us? We're rebels of God. We, we're his broken creation. It would make much more sense to just throw us in the trash and start over. Thomas? He loves us. Because he loves us. Because God loves us. That's why he does all these things. That's why we should obey him. Because he loves us. But let's go back to Jonah. What does, what does Jonah's story tell us about God? What does Jonah's story tell us about God? Yeah. Even though he messed up and um, God caused a big storm... He'll always love us? I don't know. Okay. They'll always love us. Not a bad thought. You're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, I mean, right? We, uh, when we sin, when we fail, God still forgives us, uh, and He still loves us. So that's, that's right. Yeah, Cora? He's punishing the children for the sins of the Father from the third and fourth generation. Okay, there's punishment there for... Uh, for Jonah's sin, we see that punishment given. Uh, what does Jonah try to do? What is Jonah trying to do throughout this entire story? Cooper? He's trying to save? No. Uh, he's kind of trying to save himself, right? Yeah. yeah. He's Sydney. trying to run away. Okay, he's trying to run away. He's trying to run away from who? God. From God! He's trying to run away. He's trying to hide from God. But we know that God is everywhere and God knows everything. Right? So can you really run away from God? No. Can you really hide from God? No. 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 You can't outrun God. You can't hide from God. You can't outrun God. Plus, if he loves you, why would you want to run away from God? Even when you're, even when you're called to do something that is scary, why would you run away from God? Yeah, Alex? Sometimes you don't want that much love, and it overbears you. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, his love is a good thing. It's a, it's a very good thing. You could never have too much of his love. Peter? Maybe he, he did a sin that he didn't want God to know about and he wants to run away. Um, okay, sure. Sure. That was actually a rhetorical question, but yeah. I, I mean, you guys have some good thoughts, yeah. So then, uh, let's talk about how does this apply to us? Uh, how does this apply to us? Cora? So even when God calls us to do scary things, calls us to do things that are hard, uh, we don't have to be afraid because God has promised to be with us. We don't, we shouldn't respond like Jonah did and run away from it, but we embrace God's calling. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cora. And even if we die, we're still going to be with Him in paradise. Good. Yeah. Even if we die, we're going to be with Him in paradise. We're going to be with him in that new creation. Yeah? I have a question. Okay. So, um, he knew that we were all going to sin. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. But then, why did God cause this big storm then? Because he knew that Jonah was going to have to sin sometimes. So, did he just show that, like, he's always going to be there even though, like, he's okay. there right away? 
Um, that's a good thought. I mean, he kind of demonstrates his power and says, I'm still here, you bonehead. You're not escaping yeah, me at all, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, good sentiment. I mean, I mean, God is there. Oh, why does he let Jonah run? Cora? Um, to, like, prove that he is, like, still there. Okay, uh, t again, to, to maybe prove his strength. Um, why else might he might he do this? Why else might he let Jonah run? <coughs> yeah, Ellie? Because he's never going to escape God, so he's always... Can't. Okay, to show Jonah that he's never going to escape God? Sure, sure. What happens to the people on the boat? They die. They don't die. What does it say at the end of that passage? What does it say at the end of chapter one? Uh, happens to the happens to the people on the boat. Verse sixteen. Here. Oh, they and then killed the Lord exceedingly. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Yeah, they start praising the one true God. They they understand who the one true God is. And they begin to praise him as the one true God. So my, why might he let Jonah run? Yeah, Cora? Um, like, like, um, okay, to bring Jonah back to his faith. It's all part of God's plan. But it's also part of God's plan to bring who else to this faith? Alex? The sailors, the sailors, they learn who the one true God is, and they begin to worship him. That's a big deal. That's a big deal, and that's a big part of this as well. All right. <clears throat> so when we, when we talk about outrunning God, when we talk about hiding from God, uh, do we ever try to hide or outrun God? No. Never? Yes. How? How do we try to outrun we God and hide from God? When we lie. Okay, when we lie. Sydney? Uh, when we tell mean things to our friends. When we do mean things to our friends? Okay. Okay. Cor Cooper? Um, I'm not um, I said Cooper. Yeah. Um, uh, don't like say bad words. Okay. Okay. Cora? Sinning. Okay, sinning. Um, uh, have you ever felt really guilty or ashamed of something that you've done? Did you ever try to hide from that? Maybe hide that from your parents or from maybe from God? Yet, is that the faithful thing to do? What should we do instead? Repent. Okay, and what does repent mean? What is that? Yeah, Ellie? Instead of hiding it, like, pray to God about it, or tell him that you sin and you need to forgive me, or tell your parents that what you did was wrong or whatever. Yeah, good, good. It's about, it's about repenting. Don't run away from God, but turn to Him. Don't run away from God, but turn to Him. And repent. And yeah, Cora? Be heartily sorry for your sins. Yeah, to repent is essentially to say, I'm sorry. And to really mean it. It's to turn away from those those sinful parts of your life and try to live as a child of God. You repent and turn away. Okay. Activity time? Why does it yeah. say one o'clock on the clock? The clock's wrong. 
It's it's a head head what? It is. Oh my god. Very behind. Where's All right. All right. Um, any last thoughts on this, on how this applies to us? Yeah, Cora? Um, it applies to us Okay, it, this is an example of how God takes care of you. Jonah, when, when he was thrown off the boat, should he have lived? No. 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 There's no reason why he should have lived, but what does God do? What happens at the end of chapter 1? He provides a great fish to swallow Jonah. Okay, yeah, he provides a great fish, a huge fish, to swallow Jonah and keep him safe. Okay? Um, and so, uh, God takes care of Jonah. Even in Jonah's sin, he takes care of Jonah. Okay? And notice how it says a big fish. Okay, a lot of people are like, oh, well, then it must have been a whale. That's fair. It could have been a whale. It, it also could have been something else. We don't really know. Daddy. Um, but why, why do we think it was a whale instead of a largemouth bass? Cora? Because, um, like, a largemouth bass isn't big enough to swallow a person. Good. And he was in there for three days, so Good. he's got to have some living space. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, it's got to be a big enough fish to carry Jonah around for three days. So that's why we think it was a whale. That's why the big thing is a whale. Yeah, Alex? No, it was a megalodon. Okay, it could have been a megalodon. A megalodon in a shrine of pieces. All right, so any last questions or thoughts on this? No? Okay, so here's the deal. Yeah. We don't have enough time to do the activity. Oh my gosh, and... again. <laughs> Are you guys going to listen to me? Oh, yeah. We don't have enough time to do the activity and finish this lesson. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to bump the second half of this lesson to next week. And we're going to go ahead and end this class and do the activity. Okay? Woo! Thank you. But, don't touch but I need somebody to close us I in have a bubble. Sydney? All right, Sydney's going to close this in prayer. Let me turn this off quick. Bye, Addison. Bye, Ashley.